Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and I want to take a few minutes today to talk to you about how to connect to a Windows uh, Azure, or I should say a Microsoft Azure virtual machine using PowerShell. So we're going to uh, grab the uh, latest version of the Azure PowerShell module and I'm going to assume that you've already got that installed and you can confirm that by running the get module list available command. So if we just go ahead and execute this command here, we're going to get a list of all the modules that are uh, that start with an A, and we should see Azure show up in there. So sure enough, there it is, version 0.8.6. Uh, this is being recorded on August 7th, 2014, and the latest version available is 0.8.6. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to get a reference to our Azure VM. And so let's go ahead and just take a look at our Azure services, first of all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the service called PC Geek 101 and look at the properties on that. Well, it says it doesn't exist and that's because I didn't select the right subscription first. So let's go ahead and select the uh, correct Azure subscription. Now please note that the Azure subscription names are case sensitive in the PowerShell module as of this version. Um, so make sure that your capitalization is correct. Um, now we're going to go ahead and rerun this command here to get our Azure service. And I'm just hitting the F8 key to uh, invoke the current line that's selected. So this is our Azure cloud service. And inside that cloud service, we have several virtual machines. So let's go ahead and get a list of those virtual machines. There should only be one in here. Now, as you can see, there's a single virtual machine named Trevor02 inside the cloud service named PCGeek101. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that VM has the appropriate endpoint. So we're going to run the get Azure endpoint command, and then we're going to pass in a persistent VM object, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to actually capture the VM object to a variable called VM. And then the virtual machine has a property called VM that represents some of the properties about the VM, and that's the persistent VM object that we want to pass in to get Azure Endpoint. So let's go ahead and run that command. And you can see that we have a couple of endpoints here. We have two endpoints. One is for RDP and one is for WinRM or Windows Remote Management over HTTPS or SSL. Now you can see that the public port for the cloud service that's mapped to the internal port on that VM is uh, 57,879. So basically, when we establish a PowerShell remoting connection, we're not going to be able to connect directly to 5986 unless we set up a port forward rule for that, or I should say an endpoint for that purpose uh, that forwards 5986 externally to 5986 internally on that specific VM. Because remember, uh, what we're doing is essentially NAT. Uh, we have multiple VMs inside of a single cloud service. So if we had five different VMs that all were listening on port 5986, we could only configure any one of them at a time to have the public port 5986 forward to that specific VM. So um, it's, it's very similar to doing NAT port forwarding rules in your uh, home environment. So we see that uh, Azure automatically set this up when I created the VM. So all the new VM images have uh, WinRM uh, over SSL enabled by default so that you can manage your system with PowerShell. So what we need to do is we need to create a new PowerShell session, so a, a PS session. Uh, so the computer name is actually going to be our cloud service name. So it's going to be pcgeek101.cloudapp.net in my case. We're going to have to specify a credential that contains the credentials for that VM. So let's go ahead and create a credential variable here. Uh, so I'm going to plug in my username there, and I'm just going to go ahead and run this line to get the credential. Um, so my password, I'm going to go ahead and plug in there, and um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the credential variable for the credential parameter. Now, we're also going to have to specify the port number that we want to connect to. And the port number, again, is this 57,879 over here. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We're going to use the use SSL parameter, which is just a switch parameter. So we're basically switching on that functionality by specifying that parameter. And if we go ahead and try this, we're going to receive an error. 
And what the error says is that the server certificate or the SSL certificate that's bound to the WinRM service on that remote VM uh, is signed by an unknown certificate authority. So basically that's a self-signed uh, SSL certificate that was generated for that VM, right? It, it doesn't have, it's not trusted by my laptop that I'm running this PowerShell session on. So what we need to basically do is create a PowerShell session option. So I'm gonna create a new variable just called session option and use the new PS session option command. And then I'm going to specify the skip CA check. So that's basically gonna skip validating the trust of the certificate authority. Now, normally this is not a good idea because you don't wanna just trust any certificate authority out there because uh, malicious users could set up a fake certificate authority and publish their own certificates. And if you just trust that by default, you could put yourself in a bad situation from a security perspective. So we are gonna use it in this case though, because we know that we're uh, connecting to the Azure cloud service that we built. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that session option to the end of our new PS session command here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit F8 to define that session option variable. And then I'm going to hit F8 to create the PowerShell session. And it's going to create the session and then assign the session to a variable called session. So now I should have a PS session opened and available in that session variable. So now if I want, I can say enter PS session, specify the session, and then let's put that over here. And then it will interactively go into that session so that I can now run commands on the remote computer. So as you can see, my prompt is now prefixed with my cloud service name. So I know which uh, remote computer I'm executing commands on. And I can run normal commands like uh, get WMI, <coughs> like uh, get WMI object. So let's say get WMI object win32 computer system. And that should give us some information about the computer that we're running on, which is a Hyper-V virtual machine. Um, so at that point, uh, you can pretty much do anything like you normally would with managing PowerShell remoting sessions. Um, just be, be aware that you do have to skip that certificate authority check because our local machine does not trust that self-signed certificate uh, that's bound to the WinRM service on that remote Azure VM. So I hope this video is helpful and check back for more in the future. Thanks.